Every game between the Steelers and the Belfast Giants this season has gone right down to the wire, with the results still in doubt into the final minute and beyond. The gap between these teams stands at five points, and although there are still lots of big games to come this season, both teams know the value, points-wise and psychologically, of victory today. Adam Keefe is without Jeff Baum, Lewis Hook, Tyler Soy and Henrik Eriksson. Aaron Fox welcomes Kevin Schultz back as Callie Atherid misses out. Steelers just want to keep the puck down this end. Brandon Russell thought he was being held, so did the crowd nearby. I don't really think he was. The play will continue, and the Giants now get this power play set up, but that one gets through the legs of Gabe Bast and out of the zone. Steelers in a momentary of breather. The Giants trying to dangle in front. There's an opportunity here, though. Greenfield gets back up, and the shot is blocked, and now the Steelers can charge forward to jailbreak here. They've got an option, 2-1-0, oh, can they drag it in front? They can, but Neverlinen sees his shot saved by Beska Rouhani. It was a 3-0 oh for a moment, now it's a 2-1-1 on at the other end for the Giants, and Greenfield gets across and makes a fantastic sprawling save. What a passage of play. Both goalies coming up huge. The Steelers committed to the short-handed rush. And Greenfield flings himself across and just about got enough on that one. It was Neverlinen who had his shot saved. He's only got one goal this season, finished defenceman. He should have a few more, and he should certainly perhaps have one in this game. Giants' power play is still ongoing. We've got 40 seconds left of five on four. Cooper's shot blocked by David Phillips, he's dropped his stick, in fact he's broken his stick, so that's a problem for the Steelers. David Phillips makes the block, but the puck gets through. It's the power play goal for the Giants. The Steelers short-handed, and Phillips without a stick, they just didn't have enough resources left to get the puck away. McLeod getting it underneath. Matt Greenfield, who got a little bit of leg on it, but not enough to keep it out. And for the first time, that rebound in the slot did find a forward. And it's the Giants who have the lead. Put taken on by Long, settles it down. It was rolling on him for a moment. Jones got his skates in the way of the shot, but too late. Trying to win it back in the corner. Lake shoved off the puck. Still gives it a jab. McLeod trying to play it back out front. The Giants are onto it. They'll work it back to the blue line. Ruop poked away from McLeod by Mosey. And the switch to Bast. On the wall for Lake. Shot from the top of the circle finds its way in. Greenfield unsighted. And the Giants double their lead. Lake didn't see any passing options he liked. And Greenfield couldn't get the blocker up in time. A goal and an assist for Lake, and now a two-goal advantage for the Giants. Just past the halfway point, the visitors are in control. And Christo at the puck get a little out of his reach. And now switch to Ciampini. Good pass through the middle, Newman drops it back, Allen, save made Beska Rouhani. There's better link up from these Steelers forwards. The puck is under there somewhere, the Steelers have it back, Newman. Petgrave, final ten seconds of power play, thrown towards goal. Puck is there and it won't be swept in, Newman couldn't get himself back onto his skates in time. Power play ends, Cullen exits the box and the Giants go two for two on the kill and Cullen out of the box is onto it and he's in on goal. And the save made by Greenfield kept his left leg out just far enough to deny Cullen. Cullen has 11 goals this season. He very nearly made it 12. Great extension of the leg. And then the alertness to gather the puck back in before Cooper arrived on the scene. 
So back to the neutral zone for the restart. Well around and long. Just battling for position. And again. I think if that happens once more, they might both get a delay of game penalty. Free Tom bearing across to have a word with them. Number 88 and 89. Still the pushing and shoving. Well, play is elsewhere. Valoran had his arm round long. And that's going to be a penalty because Valoran kind of wrestled him down to the ground. The crowd don't like it. And it was Valoran, I think, who probably was guilty on that one. There's a little bit of body contact, but it seemed like Valoran was responsible for wrestling here and long down to the ice. I'm going to call it roughing. There's the arm around the neck. Long's not really doing anything. All around. He throws him down. And again, Phillips throws himself in front of it. He tried doing that on the first Giants power play. But in making the save, it just found its way to a Giants player. And McLeod scored. This time, Phillips gets it partially away. Giants keep it in the zone. Conway, that one hits Allen's stick and lands in the corner. Ori battling for it, Conway gets to it, now Goodwin, he can creep in and shoot and he hits the post! David Phillips tried his best to block everything, the one he didn't block, it's actually the crossbar rather than the top of the post, it's past Greenfield's glove, and it's an inch away from the third Giants goal of the game. Penalty. Off oh, high sticking here, I think, against Valorant. It's Grant Cooper who's gone down. No, it's no, it's an elbow that's caught him high. Fans have seen the replay that you've just seen. And they're kicking Valorant out of the game here. Is this a major penalty? It looks as though it is. Valorant with a wry smile. His participation in this game is now over. And now Tangle, players hit the deck, no penalty called. Goodwin drops it back, the shot is off target, that was an opportunity for Mark Cooper. Put broad in front, then shot wide by the Giants. The Steelers don't get it clear. Shot partially blocked. Past sees it bounce straight back to him. And then the long shot gets through. Looks like he got a deflection from Conway. The power play will continue. But the points in this game look very much now as though they're going the way of the Giants. 3-0 up with a little over 10 minutes to go. Bass sends it through, and Conway celebrates. Steelers have seen great comebacks launched against them so far this season, but they haven't produced many of their own. This would be quite something if they were able to salvage it. Another penalty called here as Ruop is taken down, and it's McNally who's going after him. I think he wants a fight, and Kieran Long is saying, no, you don't. Nally is insistent, and the officials, I think they're on Kieran Longside, they don't want to let a fight break out here. And Nally is trying his best. Penalties are going to get called here, I think the initial one was on McNally. Still, they're not letting go. Sure, if that's through choice or through entanglement. So here's the incident then that led to it. That's the interference call, and that is unquestionably interference. The puck is nowhere to be seen. 
Martinelli wants some more and Long is just trying to play Peacemaker and keep him away Ian Long does not want to fight Dowd Connolly Connolly kept away from the puck Giants just want it out of their zone they want to protect this and now they will get on to this this is Mark Cooper the net is empty and that is that the Belfast Giants have a fourth and the Sheffield Steelers well it's not their night it doesn't look like it's going to be their season it was a gamble worth taking but it hasn't worked out and not a lot the Steelers have tried tonight has worked out so Mark Cooper assisted Matt McLeod McLeod has one plus two on the night and that is that not just for the game but in all probability for the Steelers title chances they are now seven points behind the Belfast Giants they need a lot of wins and a lot of help and the way the Steelers are playing right now it just doesn't seem possible Aaron not the night uh, any of us uh, wanted were we just second best tonight yeah um, I guess that's a pretty good way of putting it um, I thought both teams played very good in the first period. I know we were down a goal, but I thought we matched their energy, um, their compete level in the first period. And then the second period, they kind of took over that hockey game. Um, you know, we talked about it after the period, and the reality was they just played harder. They, they won every loose puck. Um, they were physical and aggressive in the D zone. They swarmed, they outnumber, and, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't use our release points well enough, and when we did, we didn't take advantage of it. So, um, you know, third period, Obviously, the, the waters got pretty muddy there with, with the refereeing. You're not going to kill kill 10 minutes, 11 minutes of penalty being down and, and come back in a hockey game at the same time. Um, but no excuse there. I, did I think those calls were calls? No, I didn't. But I don't think that, that affected the outcome of the hockey game tonight because I thought just Belfast was better. Very good hockey team, and they earned that tonight. Everybody in the building, it was atmospheric tonight. It was like, you know, this was a huge opportunity for us. Do you, do you feel that it's pretty much over now and it was perhaps chance lost? Well, definitely chance lost. I mean, as long as there's a path mathematically for us, we got to be ready to win the next one here. Um, you know, I think mathematically, if they go four and three and we win out, there's still that opportunity for us. They play Cardiff twice, they play Guilford, they play us. So there's, you know, there's still a pathway for us. We just got to, we got to focus on our own game. We need to bounce back tomorrow in Guilford. Never an easy place to go, um, but we still got to believe that there's, there's a, a way forward here for us to stay in this as long as possible and, and see what happens. Um, you know, and then, you know, a huge midweek on Wednesday back here where we need, you know what I mean, we need to be better in this building than we've been. Yeah. Give us some positives, any positives that you can take out of this. Is there any? Man, I don't know. Our, our, there was some fight in the third period. Um, our penalty kill really dug in and, and did a heck of a job. We counted, you know, 10, 11 minutes in, in penalties in the third there that they killed off. Um, I know they ended up scoring one goal on it, but you know they, they they battled hard there. Greener's been unbelievable. His stock keeps rising, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you know what I mean. That's that's the guy you really feel for right now because we've left him out to dry now a little bit here, not scoring goals and putting a lot of pressure on him. Um, you know, and he's he hasn't given us a bad night all year, so uh, a little disappointing there. But yeah, he was outstanding. Adam, a four nothing road victory for your team. Tell us about it. Yeah, I thought it was a complete game from our group. Uh, you know, I, I knew we were going to be ready for the moment, uh, but again, you know, we're up against a very good Sheffield team, and uh, you, you're never quite certain how it's going to go. And you know, obviously, it was a tight first period there, a big power play goal for us to kind of give us that, uh, I guess, that cushion going into the period break. But I thought our guys did a good job resetting in between period breaks and coming out and, and doing the job. And I thought, uh, you know, defensively. We were very good, you know, not giving uh, Sheffield a whole lot of life to get back into the game. And then when we did have some breakdowns, and Besco was very strong. There were some moments of real agitation out there on the ice, but your players were able to keep their discipline throughout. Yeah, well, we, I mean, it's a, this is a playoff game, right? And, and we know the magnitude of the game for Sheffield and for us. And we figured that if it went our way, there was going to be a bit of frustration boiled over. And we needed to make sure we kept our cool. And we have a very important hockey game tomorrow. Um, you know, so eyes on the prize is essentially the, the message. There's going to be plenty of twists and turns as this season goes on. But do you feel you've taken a big step in the right direction with two points here? 
Certainly a huge step. Um, that's you know that's we're not hiding from that. But uh, there's a lot of hockey left to be played. Manchester's playing well. It's a very difficult place to go into. Uh, you have to go in there and do the job, and then you have to reset and go again. We have Cardiff doubleheader, and then Sheffield, Manchester, Ken, and then Guildford. So I mean the the games keep coming thick and fast. There's going to be a whole lot of ups and downs here going forward. We just want to make sure that uh, we're on the right side of the ups. There was a little bit of aggro during this game. This teams still have to play each other once more over in Belfast later on in the season. Do you think there's likely to be anything that carries over from tonight into that game? I'm sure there's going to be a, it's going to be a tough, physical, tight game. You know, Every game against Sheffield has been, and, and we just need to worry about our own game, and that's been the message here. Like, uh, you know, When we get into these playoff style games, everybody right, rises to the occasion. Uh, and teams are playing very good right now. I said, you know, the, the good news is uh, we've been playing like that for a while now, so you just got to play our game. Another stellar performance from your netminder, another shutout. It's great depth that you have in that position, but not just there, but with two other uh, non-homegrown players sitting in the stands as well tonight. You seem like you're well stocked for the running. Yeah, it's nice to get everybody healthy and uh, you know, running here, and obviously tough decisions for me going forward but uh, you know everybody's bought in right now and everybody uh, you know sees sees the finish line and that's the difference that's why you see everybody playing playoff hockey in the league right now is everybody sees that finish line and eyes are on the prize and we're no different.